The Holy Gospel of Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. St. Luke was a native of Antioch, the capital of Syria. He was by profession a physician, and some ancient writers say that he was very skillful in painting. He was converted by St. Paul, and became his disciple and companion in his travels, and fellow laborer in the ministry of the gospel. He wrote in Greek about twenty-four years after our Lord's ascension. Luke chapter 1 The conception of John the Baptist and of Christ, the visitation and canticle of the Blessed Virgin, the birth of the Baptist, and the canticle of Zachary. Forasmuch as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a narration of the things that have been accomplished among us, according as they have delivered them unto us, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having diligently attained to all things from the beginning, to write to thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mayest know the verity of those words in which thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zachary, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Footnote. Of the course of Abia, that is, of the rank of Abia, which word in the Greek is commonly put for the employment of one day, but here for the functions of a whole week, for by the appointment of David, the first book of Paralipomenon, chapter 24, the descendants from Aaron were divided into twenty-four families, of which the eighth was Abia, from whom descended this Zachary, who at this time was in the week of his priestly functions. End of footnote. And they were both just before God, walking in all the commandments and justifications of the Lord without blame. And they had no son, for that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well advanced in years. And it came to pass, when he executed the priestly function in the order of his course before God, according to the custom of the priestly office, it was his lot to offer incense going into the temple of the Lord. And all the multitude of the people were praying without at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zachary, seeing him, was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Fear not, Zachary, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice in his nativity. For he shall be great before the Lord, and shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And he shall convert many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, that he may turn the hearts of the fathers unto the children, and the incredulous to the wisdom of the just, to prepare unto the Lord a perfect people. And Zachary said to the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answering said to him, I am Gabriel, who stand before God, and am sent to speak to thee, and to bring thee these good tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and shalt not be able to speak, until the day wherein these things shall come to pass, because thou hast not believed my words, which shall be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zachary, and they wondered that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they understood that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he made signs to them, and remained dumb. 
And it came to pass, after the days of his office were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days Elizabeth his wife conceived, and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he hath had regard to take away my reproach among men. And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God into the city of Galilee, called Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel being come in, said unto her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, who having heard was troubled at his saying, and thought with herself what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found grace with God. Behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of David his father, and he shall reign in the house of Jacob for ever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be done? Because I know not man. And the angel answering said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee, and therefore also the Holy which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she also hath conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her that is called barren, because no word shall be impossible with God. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done to me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary, rising up in those days, went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah. And she entered into the house of Zachary and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she cried out with a loud voice, and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the infant into my womb leapt for joy. And blessed art thou that hast believed, because those things shall be accomplished that were spoken to thee by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, because he hath regarded the humility of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Footnote, shall call me blessed. These words were a prediction of that honor which the church in all ages should pay to the Blessed Virgin. Let Protestants examine whether they are any way concerned in this prophecy. End of footnote. Because he that is mighty hath done great things to me, and holy is his name and his mercy is from generation unto generations to them that fear him. He hath showed might in his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the conceit of their heart, he hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble, he hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath received Israel his servant, being mindful of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed for ever. And Mary abode with her about three months, and she returned to her own house. Now Elizabeth's full time of being delivered was come, and she brought forth a son. 
and her neighbors and kinsfolks heard that the Lord had showed his great mercy towards her, and they congratulated with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him by his father's name Zachary. And his mother answering said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said to her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father how he would have him called, and demanding a writing table he wrote, saying, John is his name. And they all wondered. And immediately his mouth was opened, and his tongue loosed, and he spoke, Blessing God. And fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these things were noised abroad over all the hill country of Judea. And all they that had heard them laid them up in their heart, saying, What and one think ye shall this child be? For the hand of the Lord was with him. And Zachary his father was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, because he hath visited and wrought the redemption of his people, and hath raised up an horn of salvation to us in the house of David his servant. Footnote, horn of salvation, that is, a powerful salvation, as Dr. Witham translates it. For in the scripture, by horn is generally understood strength and power. End of footnote. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who are from the beginning, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy testament, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father that he would grant to us, that being delivered from the hand of our enemies we may serve him without fear in holiness and justice before him all our days. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people unto the remission of their sins, through the bowels of the mercy of our God, in which the Orient from on high hath visited us. Footnote, the Orient. It is one of the titles of the Messiah, the true light of the world, and the son of justice. End of footnote. To enlighten them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to direct our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and was strengthened in spirit, and was in the deserts until the day of his manifestation to Israel. End of section 5。section 6 of the Douay Reims New Testament。this LibriVox recording is in the public domain。section 6 。Luke chapter 2 。the birth of Christ。his presentation in the temple。Simeon's prophecy, Christ at twelve years of age, is found amongst the doctors. And it came to pass that in those days there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This enrolling was first made by Cyrenius, the governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary his espoused wife who was with child. And it came to pass that when they were there her days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him up in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Footnote. Her firstborn. 
the meaning is not that she had afterward any other child but it is a way of speech among the hebrews to call them also the firstborn who are the only children see annotation matthew chapter one verse twenty five and a footnote and there were in the same country shepherds watching and keeping the night watches over their flock and behold an angel of the lord stood by them and the brightness of god shone round about them and they feared with a great fear and the angel said to them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy that shall be to all the people for this day is born to you a saviour who is christ the lord in the city of david and this shall be a sign unto you you shall find the infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly army praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace to men of good will and it came to pass after the angels departed from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us go over to bethlehem and let us see this word that is come to pass which the lord hath showed to us and they came with haste and they found mary and joseph and the infant lying in the manger and seeing they understood the word that had been spoken to them concerning this child and all that heard wondered and at those things that were told them by the shepherds but mary kept all these words pondering them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told unto them and after eight days were accomplished that the child should be circumcised his name was called jesus which was called by the angel before he was conceived in the womb and after the days of her purification according to the law of moses were accomplished they carried him to jerusalem to present him to the lord as it is written in the law of the lord every male opening the womb shall be called holy to the lord and to offer a sacrifice according as it is written in the law of the lord a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons and behold there was a man in jerusalem named simeon and this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of israel and the holy ghost was in him and he had received an answer from the holy ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the christ of the lord and he came by the spirit into the temple and when his parents brought in the child jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law he also took him into his arms and blessed god and said now thou dost dismiss thy servant o lord according to thy word in peace because my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all peoples a light to the revelation of the gentiles and the glory of thy people israel and his father and mother were wondering at those things which were spoken concerning him and simeon blessed them and said to mary his mother behold this child is set for the fall and for the resurrection of many in israel and for a sign which shall be contradicted footnote for the fall etc christ came for the salvation of all men but here simeon prophesies what would come to pass that many through their own wilful blindness and obstinacy would not believe in christ nor receive his doctrine which therefore would be ruin to them but to others a resurrection by their believing in him and obeying his commandments and a footnote and thy own soul a sword shall pierce that out of many hearts thoughts may be revealed 
and there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was far advanced in years, and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow until fourscore and four years, who departed not from the temple, by fastings and prayers, serving night and day. Now she, at the same hour coming in, confessed to the Lord, and spoke of him to all that looked for the redemption of Israel. And after they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their city of Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong, full of wisdom, and the grace of God was in him. And his parents went every year to Jerusalem at the solemn day of the Pasch. And when he was twelve years old, they, going up into Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast, and having fulfilled the days when they returned, the child Jesus remained in Jerusalem, and his parents knew it not. And thinking that he was in the company, they came a day's journey, and sought him among their kinsfolks and acquaintance. And not finding him, they returned into Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, hearing them, and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his wisdom and his answers and seeing him they wondered. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou done so to us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said to them, How is it that you sought me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the word that he spoke unto them. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject to them. And his mother kept all these words in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and grace with God and men. Luke chapter 3 John's mission and preaching Christ is baptized by him. Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being Tetrarch of Galilee, and Philip his brother, Tetrarch of Etruria, and the country of Trachonitis, and Licinius, Tetrarch of Abilina, under the high priests Anna and Caiaphas. The word of the Lord was made unto John, the son of Zachary, in the desert. And he came into all the country about the Jordan, preaching the baptism of penance for the remission of sins, as it was written in the book of the sayings of Isaiah the prophet, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways plain, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said therefore to the multitudes that went forth to be baptized by him, Ye offspring of vipers, who hath shewed you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruits worthy of penance, and do not begin to say, We have Abraham for our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children to Abraham, for now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that bringeth not forth good fruit shall be cut down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What then shall we do? And he answering said to them, He that hath two coats, let him give to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do in like manner. And the publicans also came to be baptized, and said to him, Master, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do nothing more than that which is appointed you. And the soldiers also asked him, saying, And what shall we do? 
And he said to them, Do violence to no man, neither calumniate any man, and be content with your pay. And as the people were of opinion, and all were thinking in their hearts of John, that perhaps he might be the Christ, John answered, saying unto all, I indeed baptize you with water, but there shall come one mightier than I, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to loose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And many other things exhorting did he preach to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, when he was reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, he added this also above all, and shut up John in prison. Now it came to pass, when all the people were baptized, that Jesus also being baptized and praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape as a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. And Jesus himself was beginning about the age of thirty years, being, as it was supposed, the son of Joseph, who was of Heli, who was of Mathat. Who was of Heli? St. Joseph, who by nature was the son of Jacob. See St. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16, in the account of the law, was son of Heli. For Heli and Jacob were brothers by the same mother. And Heli, who was the elder, dying without issue, Jacob, as the law directed, married his widow. In consequence of such marriage, his son Joseph was reputed in the law the son of Heli. End of footnote. Who was of Levi, who was of Melchi, who was of Jane, who was of Joseph, who was of Mathathias, who was of Amos, who was of Nahum, who was of Hesli, who was of Nage, who was of Mahath, who was of Mathathias, who was of Semai, who was of Joseph, who was of Judah, who was of Joanna, who was of Reza, who was of Zerubbabel, who was of Salathiel, who was of Neri, who was of Melchi, who was of Adi, who was of Kosan, who was of Helmadan, who was of Hur, who was of Jesus, who was of Eliza, who was of Jorim, who was of Mathat, who was of Levi, who was of Simeon, who was of Judas, who was of Joseph, who was of Jonah, who was of Eliakim, who was of Malia, who was of Mena, who was of Mathatha, who was of Nathan, who was of David, who was of Jesse, who was of Obed, who was of Boaz, who was of Salmon, who was of Naason, who was of Aminadab, who was of Aram, who was of Asran, who was of Phares, who was of Judas, who was of Jacob, who was of Isaac, who was of Abraham, who was of Ther, who was of Dakor, who was of Sarug, who was of Ragau, who was of Phaleg, who was of Heber, who was of Saleh, who was of Canaan, who was of who was of Arphaxad, who was of Sem, who was of Noah, who was of Lamech, who was of Methuselah, who was of Henoch, who was of Jared, who was of Malaliel, who was of Canaan, who was of Henos, who was of Seth, who was of Adam, who was of God. Luke chapter 4 Christ's Fasting and Temptation he is persecuted in Nazareth, his miracles in Capharnaum. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from the Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the desert for the space of forty days, and was tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing in those days, and when they were ended he was hungry. 
And the devil said to him, If thou be the Son of God, say to this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, Is written that man liveth not by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil led him into a high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And he said to him, To thee will I give all this power and glory of them. For to me they are delivered, and to whom I will I give them. If thou therefore wilt adore before me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answering said to him, It is written, Thou shalt adore the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself from hence. For it is written that he hath given his angels a charge over thee, that they keep thee, and that in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest perhaps thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said to him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And all the temptation being ended, the devil departed from him for a time. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, and the fame of him went out through the whole country. And he taught in their synagogues, and was magnified by all. And he came to Nazareth, where he was brought up. And he went into the synagogue, according to his custom on the Sabbath day, and he rose up to read. And the book of Isaiah the prophet was delivered unto him. And as he unfolded the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Wherefore he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he hath sent me to heal the contrite of heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of reward. And when he had folded the book, he restored it to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, This day is fulfilled this scripture in your ears. And all gave testimony to him. And they wondered at the words of grace that proceeded from his mouth, and they said, Is not this the son of Joseph? And he said to them, Doubtless you will say to me this similitude, Physician, heal thyself. As great things as we have heard done in Capernaum, do also hear in thy own country. And he said, Amen, I say to you that no prophet is accepted in his own country. In truth I say to you, there were many widows in the days of Elias in Israel, when heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there was a great famine throughout all the earth. And to none of them was Elias sent, but to Sarepta of Sidon, to a widow woman. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elysius the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, but Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, hearing these things, were filled with anger. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they brought him to the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. And he went down into Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and there he taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his speech was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man who had an unclean devil, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. 
and jesus rebuked him saying hold thy peace and go out of him and when the devil had thrown him into the midst he went out of him and hurt him not at all and there came fear upon all and they talked among themselves saying what word is this for with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits and they go out and the fame of him was published in every place of the country and jesus rising up out of the synagogue went into simon's house and simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever and they besought him for her and standing over her he commanded the fever and it left her and immediately rising she ministered to them and when the sun was down all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them to him but he laying his hands on every one of them healed them and devils went out from many crying out and saying thou art the son of god and rebuking them he suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was christ and when it was day going out he went into a desert place and the multitudes sought him and came unto him and they stayed him that should not depart from them to whom he said to other cities also i must preach the kingdom of god for therefore am i sent and he was preaching in the synagogues of galilee luke chapter five the miraculous draught of fishes the cure of the leper and of the paralytic the call of matthew and it came to pass that when the multitudes pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of genazareth and saw two ships standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets and going into one of the ships that was simon's he desired him to draw back a little from the land and sitting he taught the multitudes out of the ship now when he had ceased to speak he said to simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught and simon answering said to him master we have labored all the night and have taken nothing but at thy word i will let down the net and when they had done this they enclosed a very great multitude of fishes and their net broke and they beckoned to their partners that were in the other ship that they should come and help them and they came and filled both the ships so that they were almost sinking which when simon peter saw he fell down at Jesus' knee saying depart from me for i am a sinful man o lord for he was wholly astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken and so were also james and john the sons of zebedee who were simon's partners and jesus saith to simon fear not from henceforth thou shalt catch men and having brought their ships to land leaving all things they followed him and it came to pass when he was in a certain city behold a man full of leprosy who seeing jesus and falling on his face besought him saying lord if thou wilt thou canst make me clean and stretching forth his hand he touched him saying i will be thou cleansed and immediately the leprosy departed from him and he charged him that he should tell no man but go show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing according as moses commanded for a testimony to them but the fame of him went abroad the more and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him in their infirmities and he retired into the desert and prayed and it came to pass on a certain day as he sat teaching that there were also pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by that were come out of every town of galilee and judea and jerusalem and the power of the lord was to heal them and behold men brought in a bed a man who had the palsy 
and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him and when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude they went up upon the roof and let him down through the tiles with his bed into the midst before jesus whose faith when he saw he said man thy sins are forgiven thee and the scribes and pharisees began to think saying who is this who speaketh blasphemies who can forgive sins but god alone and when jesus knew their thoughts answering he said to them what is it you think in your hearts which is easier to say thy sins are forgiven thee or to say arise and walk but that you may know that the son of man hath the power on earth to forgive sins he saith to the sick of the palsy i say to thee arise take up thy bed and go into thy house and immediately rising up before them he took up the bed on which he lay and he went away to his own house glorifying god and all were astonished and they glorified god and they were filled with fear saying we have seen wonderful things to-day and after these things he went forth and saw a publican named levi sitting at the receipt of custom and he said to him follow me and leaving all things he rose up and followed him and levi made him a great feast in his own house and there was a great company of publicans and of others that were at table with them but the pharisees and scribes murmured saying to his disciples why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners and jesus answering said to them they that are whole need not the physician but they that are sick i come not to call the just but sinners to penance and they said to him why do the disciples of john fast often and make prayers and the disciples of the pharisees in like manner but thine eat and drink to whom he said can you make the children of the bridegroom fast whilst the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them then shall they fast in those days and he spoke also a similitude to them that no man putteth a piece from a new garment upon an old garment otherwise he both rendeth the new and the piece taken from the new agreeeth not with the old and no man putteth new wine into old bottles otherwise the new wine will break the bottles and it will be spilt and the bottles will be lost but new wine must be put into new bottles and both are preserved and no man drinking old hath presently a mind to new for he saith the old is better luke chapter six christ excuses his disciples he cures upon the sabbath day chooses the twelve and makes a sermon to them and it came to pass on the second first sabbath that as he went through the cornfields his disciples plucked the ears and did eat rubbing them in their hands footnote the second first sabbath some understand this of the sabbath of pentecost which was the second in course among the great feasts others of a sabbath day that immediately followed any solemn feast and a footnote and some of the pharisees said to them why do you that which is not lawful on the sabbath days and jesus answering them said have you not read so much as this what david did when himself was hungry and they that were with him how he went into the house of god and took and ate the bread of proposition and gave to them that were with him which is not lawful to eat but only for the priests and he said to them the son of man is lord also of the sabbath and it came to pass also on another sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught and there was a man whose right hand was withered and the scribes and pharisees watched if he would heal on the sabbath that they might find an accusation against him 
but he knew their thoughts and said to the man who had the withered hand arise and stand forth in the midst and rising he stood forth then jesus said to them i ask you if it be lawful on the sabbath days to do good or to do evil to save life or to destroy and looking round about on them all he said to the man stretch forth thy hand and he stretched it forth and his hand was restored and they were filled with madness and they talked one with another what they might do to jesus and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and he passed the whole night in the prayer of god and when day was come he called unto him his disciples and he chose twelve of them whom also he named apostles simon whom he surnamed peter and andrew his brother james and john philip and bartholomew matthew and thomas james the son of alpheus and simon who is called zealots and jude the brother of james and judas iscariot who was the traitor and coming down with them he stood in a plain place and the company of his disciples and a very great multitude of people from all judea and jerusalem and the sea coast both of tyre and sidon who were come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases and they that were troubled with unclean spirits were cured and all the multitude sought to touch him for virtue went out from him and healed all and he lifting up his eyes on his disciples said blessed are ye poor for yours is the kingdom of god blessed are ye that hunger now for you shall be filled blessed are ye that weep now for you shall laugh blessed shall you be when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the son of man's sake be glad in that day and rejoice for behold your reward is great in heaven for according to these things did their fathers to the prophets but woe to you that are rich for you have your consolation woe to you that are filled for you shall hunger woe to you that now laugh for you shall mourn and weep woe to you when men shall bless you for according to these things did their fathers to the false prophets but i say to you that here love your enemies do good to them that hate you bless them that curse you and pray for them that calumniate you and to him that striketh thee on the one cheek offer also the other and him that taketh away from thee thy cloak forbid not to take thy coat also give to every one that asketh thee and of him that taketh away thy goods ask them not again and as you would that men should do to you do you also to them in like manner and if you love them that love you what thanks are to you for sinners also love those that love them and if you do good to them who do good to you what thanks are to you for sinners also do this and if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive what thanks are to you for sinners also lend to sinners for to receive as much but love ye your enemies do good and lend hoping for nothing thereby and your reward shall be great and you shall be the sons of the highest for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful judge not and you shall not be judged condemn not and you shall not be condemned forgive and you shall be forgiven give and it shall be given to you good measure and pressed down and shaken together and running over shall they give into your bosom for with the same measure that you shall meet with all it shall be measured to you again and he spoke also to them a similitude can the blind lead the blind 
do they not both fall into the ditch the disciple is not above his master but every one shall be perfect if he be as his master and why seest thou the mote in thy brother's eye but the beam that is in thy own eye thou considerest not or how canst thou say to thy brother brother let me pull the mote out of thy eye when thou thyself seest not the beam in thy own eye hypocrite cast first the beam out of thy own eye and then shalt thou see clearly to take out the mote from thy brother's eye for there is no good tree that bringeth forth evil fruit nor an evil tree that bringeth forth good fruit for every tree is known by its fruit for men do not gather figs from thorns nor from a bramble bush do they gather the grape a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth that which is evil for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and why call you me lord lord and do not the things which i say every one that cometh to me and heareth my word and doth them i will show you to whom he is like he is like a man building a house who digged deep and laid the foundation upon a rock and when a flood came the stream beat vehemently upon that house and it could not shake it for it was founded on a rock but he that heareth and doth not is like to a man building his house upon the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great luke chapter seven christ heals the centurion's servant he raises the widow's son to life answers the messenger sent by john and absolves the penitent sinner and when he had finished all his words in the hearing of the people he entered into capharnaum and the servant of a certain centurion who was dear to him being sick was ready to die and when he had heard of jesus he sent unto him the ancients of the jews desiring him to come and heal his servant and when they came to jesus they besought him earnestly saying to him he is worthy that thou shouldst do this for him for he loveth our nation and he hath built us a synagogue and jesus went with them and when he was now not far from the house the centurion sent his friends to him saying lord trouble not thyself for i am not worthy that thou shouldst enter under my roof for which cause neither did i think myself worthy to come to thee but say the word and my servant shall be healed for i also am a man subject to authority having under me soldiers and i say to one go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doth it which jesus hearing marvelled and turning about to the multitude that followed him he said amen i say to you i have not found so great faith not even in israel and they who were sent being returned to the house found the servant whole who had been sick and it came to pass afterwards that he went into a city that is called naim and there went with him his disciples and a great multitude and when he came nigh to the gate of the city behold a dead man was carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and a great multitude of the city was with her whom when the lord had seen being moved with mercy toward her he said to her weep not and he came near and touched the bier and they that carried it stood still and he said young man i say to thee arise and he that was dead sat up 
and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. And there came a fear upon them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet is risen up among us, and God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea, and throughout all the country round about. And John's disciples told him of all these things. And John called to him two of his disciples, and sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? And when the men were come unto him, they said, John the Baptist hath sent us to thee, saying, Art thou he that art to come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their diseases and hurts and evil spirits, and to many that were blind he gave sight. And answering he said to them, Go and relate to John what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are made clean, the deaf hear, the dead rise again, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be scandalized in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak to the multitudes concerning John. What went ye out into the desert to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went you out to see, a man clothed in soft garments? Behold, they that are in costly apparel, and live delicately, are in the houses of kings. But what went you out to see, a prophet? Yea, I say to you, and more than a prophet, this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my angel before thy face, who shall prepare thy way before thee. For I say to you, Amongst those that are born of men, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. But he that is the lesser in the kingdom of God is greater than he. And all the people hearing and the publicans justified God being baptized with John's baptism. Footnote. Justified God. That is, praised the justice of God, fear and worshipped God, as just and merciful end of footnote but the pharisees and the lawyers despised the counsel of god against themselves being not baptized by him and the lord said where unto you then shall i liken the men of this generation and to what are they like they are like to children sitting in the market-place and speaking one to another and saying we have piped to you, and you have not danced. We have mourned, and you have not wept. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man is come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a man that is a glutton and a drinker of wine, a friend of publicans and sinners. And wisdom is justified by all her children and one of the Pharisees desired him to eat with him. And he went into the house of the Pharisee, and sat down to meet. Footnote. One of the Pharisees, that is, Simon. End of footnote. And behold, a woman that was in the city, a sinner, when she knew that he sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. And standing behind at his feet, she began to wash his feet with tears, and wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. And the Pharisee who had invited him, seeing it, spoke within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know surely who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him that she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. But he said, Master, say it. A certain creditor had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence, and the other fifty. 
and whereas they had not wherewith to pay, he forgave them both. Which therefore of the two lovest him most? Simon answering said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said to him, Thou hast judged rightly. And turning to the woman, he said unto Simon, Dost thou see this woman? I entered into thy house, thy gavest me no water for my feet, but she with tears hath washed my feet, and with her hairs hath wiped them. Thou gavest me no kiss, but she, since she came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but she with ointment hath anointed my feet. Wherefore I say to thee, Many sins are forgiven her, because she hath loved much. But to whom less is forgiven, he loveth less. Footnote. Many sins are forgiven her, because she hath loved much. In the scripture, an effect sometimes seems attributed to one only cause, when there are diverse other concurring dispositions. For the sins of this woman in this verse are said to be forgiven because she loved much. But, verse 50, Christ tells her, Thy faith hath made thee safe. Hence, in a true conversion, are joined faith, hope, love, sorrow for sin, and other pious dispositions. End of footnote. And he said to her, Thy sins are forgiven thee. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith hath made thee safe. Go in peace. Luke chapter 8 The parable of the seed Christ stills the storm at sea, casts out the legion, heals the issue of blood, and raises the daughter of Jairus to life. And it came to pass, afterwards he travelled through the cities and towns, preaching and evangelizing the kingdom of God, and the twelve with him. And certain women, who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, who is called Magdalene, out of whom seven devils were gone forth, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others who ministered unto him of their substance. And when a very great multitude was gathered together, and hastened out of the cities unto him, he spoke by a similitude. The sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And other some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And other some fell among thorns, and the thorns growing up with it choked it. And other some fell upon good ground, and being sprung up, yielded fruit a hundredfold. Saying these things, he cried out, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him what this parable might be, to whom he said, To you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to the rest in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing may not understand. Footnote. Seeing they may not see. See the annotation. Mark Chapter 4, verse 12. End of footnote. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. And they by the wayside are they that hear. Then the devil cometh and taketh the word out of their heart, lest believing they should be saved. Now they upon the rock are they who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no roots, for they believe for a while, and in time of temptation they fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they who have heard, and going their way are choked 
with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and yield no fruit but that on the good ground are they who in a good and perfect heart hearing the word keep it and bring forth fruit in patience now no man lighting a candle covereth it with a vessel or putteth it under a bed but setteth it upon a candlestick that they who come in may see the light for there is not anything secret that shall not be made manifest nor hidden that shall not be known and come abroad take heed therefore how you hear for whosoever hath to him shall be given and whosoever hath not that also which he thinketh he hath shall be taken away from him and his mother and brethren came unto him and they could not come at him for the crowd and it was told him thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee who answering said to them my mother and my brethren are they who hear the word of god and do it and it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a little ship with his disciples and he said to them let us go over to the other side of the lake and they launched forth and when they were sailing he slept and there came down a storm of wind upon the lake and they were filled and were in danger and they came and awaked him saying master we perish but he arising rebuked the wind and the rage of the water and it ceased and there was a calm and he said to them where is your faith who being afraid wondered saying one to another who is this think you that he commandeth both the winds and the sea and they obey him and they sailed to the country of the gerasons which is over against galilee and when he was come forth to the land there met him a certain man who had a devil now a very long time and he wore no clothes neither did he abide in a house but in the sepulchres and when he saw jesus he fell down before him and crying out with a loud voice he said what have i to do with thee jesus son of the most high god i beseech thee do not torment me for he commanded the unclean spirits to go out of the man for many times it seized him and he was bound with chains and kept in fetters and breaking the bonds he was driven by the devil into the deserts and jesus asked him saying what is thy name but he said legion because many devils were entered into him and they besought him that he would not command them to go into the abyss and there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them and he suffered them the devils therefore went out of the man and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were stifled which when they that fed them saw done they fled away and told it in the city and in the villages and they went out to see what was done and they came to jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at his feet clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid and they also that had seen told them how he had been healed from the legion and all the multitude of the country of the gerasens besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he going up into the ship returned back again now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away saying return to thy house and tell how great things god hath done to thee and he went through the whole city publishing how great things jesus had done to him and it came to pass that when jesus was returned the multitude received him for they were all waiting for him and behold 
there came a man whose name was Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at the feet of Jesus, beseeching him that he would come into his house. For he had an only daughter, almost twelve years old, and she was dying. And it happened, as he went, that he was thronged by the multitudes. And there was a certain woman, having an issue of blood twelve years, who had bestowed all her substance on physicians, and could not be healed by any. She came behind him, and touched the hem of his garment, and immediately the issue of her blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who is it that touched me? And all denying, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press thee, and dost thou say, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I know that virtue is gone out from me. And the woman, seeing that she was not hid, came trembling and fell down before his feet, and declared before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was immediately healed. But he said to her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, go thy way in peace. As he was yet speaking, there cometh one to the ruler of the synagogue, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble him not. And Jesus, hearing this word, answered the father of the maid, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be safe. And when he was come to the house, he suffered not any man to go in with him but Peter and James and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. And all wept and mourned for her. But he said, Weep not, the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. But he, taking her by the hand, cried out, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he bid them give her to eat. And her parents were astonished, whom he charged to tell no man what was done. Luke chapter 9 Christ sends forth his apostles, feeds five thousand with five loaves, is transfigured and casts out a devil. Then, calling together the twelve apostles, he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said to them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staff, nor scrip, nor bread, nor money, neither have two coats. And whatsoever house you shall enter into, abide there, and depart not from thence. And whosoever will not receive you, when ye go out of that city, shake off even the dust of your feet for a testimony against them. And going out, they went about through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere now herod the tetrarch heard of all things that were done by him and he was in a doubt because it was said by some that john was risen from the dead but by other some that elias had appeared and by others that one of the old prophets was risen again and Herod said, John I have beheaded, but who is this of whom I hear such things? And he sought to see him. And the apostles, when they were returned, told him all they had done. And taking them, he went aside into a desert place apart, which belongeth to Bethsaida, which when the people knew, they followed him. And he received them and spoke to them of the kingdom of God, and healed them who had need of healing. Now the day began to decline, and the twelve came and said to him, Send away the multitude, that, going into the towns and villages round about, they may lodge and get victuals, for we are here in a desert place. 
but he said to them give you them to eat and they said we have no more than five loaves and two fishes unless perhaps we should go and buy food for all this multitude now there were about five thousand men and he said to his disciples make them sit down by fifties in a company and they did so and made them all sit down and taking the five loaves and the two fishes he looked up to heaven and blessed them and he broke and distributed to his disciples to set before the multitude and they did all eat and were filled and there were taken up of fragments that remained to them twelve baskets and it came to pass as he was alone praying his disciples also were with him and he asked them saying whom do the people say that i am but they answered and said john the baptist but some say elias and others say that one of the former prophets is risen again and he said to them but whom do you say that i am simon peter answering said the christ of god but he strictly charging them commanded they should tell this to no man saying the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the ancients and chief priests and scribes and be killed and the third day rise again and he said to all if any man will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it for he that shall lose his life for my sake shall save it for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself and cast away himself for he that shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him the son of man shall be ashamed when he shall come in his majesty and that of his father and of the holy angels but i tell you of a truth there are some standing here that shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of god and it came to pass about eight days after these words that he took peter and james and john and went up into a mountain to pray and whilst he prayed the shape of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glittering and behold two men were talking with him and they were moses and elias appearing in majesty and they spoke of his decrease that he should accomplish in jerusalem but peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep and waking they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him and it came to pass that as they were departing from him peter saith to jesus master it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles one for thee and one for moses and one for elias not knowing what he said and as he spoke these things there came a cloud and overshadowed them and they were afraid when they entered into the cloud and a voice came out of the cloud saying this is my beloved son hear him and whilst the voice was uttered jesus was found alone and they held their peace and told no man in those days any of these things which they had seen and it came to pass the day following when they came down from the mountain there met him a great multitude and behold a man among the crowd cried out saying master i beseech thee look upon my son because he is my only one and lo a spirit seizeth him and he suddenly crieth out and he throweth him down and teareth him so that he foameth and bruising him he hardly departeth from him and i desired thy disciples to cast him out and they could not and jesus answering said o faithless and perverse generation how long shall i be with you and suffer you bring hither thy son 
and as he was coming to him the devil threw him down and tore him and jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and cured the boy and restored him to his father and all were astonished at the mighty power of god but while all wondered at all the things he did he said to his disciples lay you up in your hearts these words for it shall come to pass that the son of man shall be delivered into the hands of men but they understood not this word and it was hid from them so that they perceived it not and they were afraid to ask him concerning this word and there entered a thought into them which of them should be greater but jesus seeing the thoughts of their hearts took a child and set him by him and said to them whosoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me and whosoever shall receive me receiveth him that sent me for he that is the lesser among you all he is the greater and john answering said master we saw a certain man casting out devils in thy name and we forbade him because he followeth not with us and jesus said to him forbid him not for he that is not against you is for you and it came to pass when the days of his assumption were accomplishing that he steadfastly set his face to go to jerusalem and he sent his messengers before his face and going they entered into the city of the samaritans to prepare for him and they received him not because his face was of one going to jerusalem and when his disciples james and john had seen this they said lord wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them and turning he rebuked them saying you know not of what spirit you are the son of man came not to destroy souls but to save and they went into another town and it came to pass as they walked in the way that a certain man said to him i will follow thee whithersoever thou goest jesus said to him the foxes have holes and the birds of the air nests but the son of man hath not where to lay his head but he said to another follow me and he said lord suffer me first to go and to bury my father and jesus said to him let the dead bury their dead but go thou and preach the kingdom of god and another said i will follow thee lord but let me first take my leave of them that are at my house jesus said to him no man putting his hand to the plough and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god End of section 6section seven of the douay reims new testament this librivox recording is in the public domain section seven luke chapter ten christ sends forth and instructs his seventy-two disciples the good samaritan and after these things the lord appointed also other seventy-two and he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself was to come and he said to them the harvest indeed is great but the laborers are few pray ye therefore the lord of the harvest that he send laborers into his harvest go behold i send you as lambs among wolves carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way into whatever house you enter first say peace be to this house and if the son of peace be there your peace shall rest upon him but if not it shall return to you and in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they have for the laborer is worthy of his hire remove not from house to house and into what city soever you enter and they receive you eat such things as they set before you 
and heal the sick that are therein, and say to them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, going forth into the streets thereof, say, Even the dust of your city that cleaveth to us we wipe off against you. Yet know this, that the kingdom of God is at hand. I say to you, it shall be more tolerable at that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to thee, Corozane! Woe to thee, Bethsaida! For if in Tyre and Sidon had been wrought the mighty works that have been wrought in you, they would have done penance long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capharnaum, which art exalted unto heaven, thou shalt be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you heareth me, and he that despiseth you despiseth me, and he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. And the seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, the devils also are subject to us in thy name. And he said to them, I saw Satan like lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions, and upon all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. But yet rejoice not in this, that spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice in this, that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour he rejoiced in the Holy Ghost, and said, I confess to thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them to little ones. Yea, Father, for so it hath seemed good in thy sight. Footnote. He rejoiced in the Holy Ghost, that is, according to his humanity he rejoiced in the Holy Ghost, and gave thanks to his eternal Father. End of footnote. All things are delivered to me by my Father, and no one knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal him. And turning to his disciples, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see the things which you see. For I say to you that many prophets and kings have desired to see the things that you see and have not seen them, and to hear the things that you hear and have not heard them. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up, tempting him and saying, Master, what must I do to possess eternal life? But he said to him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? He answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, and with thy whole soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among robbers, who also stripped him, and having wounded him, went away, leaving him half dead. And it chanced that a certain priest went down the same way, and seeing him, passed by. In like manner also a Levite, when he was near the place, and saw him, passed by. But a certain Samaritan, being on his journey, came near him and seeing him was moved with compassion, and going up to him bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and setting him upon his own beast, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And the next day he took out two pence, and gave to the host, and said, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou shalt spend over and above I, at my return will repay thee. Which of these three, in thy opinion, was neighbor to him that fell among the robbers? But he said, He that showed mercy to him. And Jesus said to him, Go, and do thou in like manner. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain town, and a certain woman named Martha 
received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who, sitting also at the Lord's feet, heard his word. But Martha was busy with much serving, who stood and said, Lord, hast thou no care that my sister hath left me alone to serve? Speak to her, therefore, that she help me. And the Lord answering said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and art troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary hath chosen the best part, which shall be not taken away from her. Luke chapter 11 Christ teaches his disciples to pray. He casts out a dumb devil, confutes the Pharisees, and pronounces woes against them for their hypocrisy. And it came to pass that as he was in a certain place praying, when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also every one that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go to him at midnight, and shall say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves? Because a friend of mine is come off his journey to me, and I have not what to set before him. And he from within should answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Yet if he shall continue knocking, I say to you, although he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say to you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And which of you, if he ask his father bread, will he give him a stone, or a fish, Will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he reach him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father from heaven give the good spirit to them that ask him? And he was casting out a devil, and the same was dumb. And when he had cast out the devil, the dumb spoke, and the multitudes were in admiration at it. And some of them said, He casteth out devils by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. And others, tempting, asked of him a sign from heaven. But he, seeing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be brought to desolation, and house upon house shall fall. And if Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because you say that through Beelzebub I cast out devils. Now if I cast out devils by Beelzebub, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I by the finger of God cast out devils, doubtless the kingdom of God is come upon you. When a strong man, armed, keepeth his court, those things are in peace which he possesseth. But if a stronger than he come upon him and overcome him, he will take away all his armor, wherein he trusted, and will distribute his spoils. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through places without water, seeking rest, and not finding, he saith, I will return into my house whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then he goeth and taketh with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and entering in they dwell there, 
and the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. And it came to pass, as he spoke these things, a certain woman from the crowd, lifting up her voice, said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore thee, and the paps that gave thee suck. And he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God, and keep it. And the multitudes running together, he began to say, This generation is a wicked generation. It asketh a sign, and a sign shall not be given it, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. For as Jonas was a sign to the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man also be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise in the judgment with the men of this generation, and shall condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, more than Solomon here. The men of Nineveh shall rise in the judgment with this generation, and shall condemn it, because they did penance at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, more than Jonas here. No man lighteth a candle, and putteth it in a hidden place, nor under a bushel, but upon a candlestick that they that come in may see the light. The light of thy body is thy eye. If thy eye be single, thy whole body will be lightsome. But if it be evil, thy body also will be darksome. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If then thy whole body be lightsome, having no part of darkness, the whole shall be lightsome, and as a bright lamp shall enlighten thee. And as he was speaking, a certain Pharisee prayed him that he would dine with him, and he going in sat down to eat. And the Pharisee began to say, thinking within himself, why he was not washed before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees, make clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but your inside is full of rapine and iniquity. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make also that which is within? But yet that which remaineth give alms, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe to you, Pharisees, because you tithe mint and rue and every herb and pass over judgment and the charity of God. Now these things you ought to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and salutations in the marketplace. Woe to you, because you are as sepulchres that appear not, and men that walk over you are not aware. And one of the lawyers answering saith to him, Master, in saying these things thou reproachest us also. But he said, Woe to you lawyers also, because you load men with burdens which they cannot bear, and you yourselves touch not the packs with one of your fingers. Footnote, Woe to you lawyers. He speaks of the doctors of the law of Moses, commonly called the scribes. End of footnote. Woe to you who build the monuments of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Footnote. Woe to you who build, etc. Not that the building of the monuments of the prophets was in itself blameworthy, but only the intention of these unhappy men, who made use of this outward show of religion and piety, as a means to carry on their wicked designs against the prince of prophets. End of footnote. Truly you bear witness that you consent to the doings of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and you build their sepulchres. For this cause also the wisdom of God said, I will send to them prophets and apostles, and some of them they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel until the blood of Zacharias, who was slain between the altar and the temple. Yea, I say to you, it shall be required of this generation. 
Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You yourselves have not entered in, and those that are entering in you have hindered. And as he was saying these things to them, the Pharisees and lawyers began violently to urge him and to oppress his mouth about many things, lying in wait for him and seeking to catch something from his mouth that they might accuse him. Luke chapter 12 Christ warns us against hypocrisy, the fear of the world, and covetousness. He admonishes all to watch. And when great multitudes stood about him, so that they trod one upon another, he began to say to his disciples, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, nor hidden that shall not be known. For whatsoever things you have spoken in darkness shall be published in the light, and that which you have spoken in the ear in the chambers shall be preached on the housetops. And I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of them who kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you shall fear. Fear ye him who, after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say to you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? Yea, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. And I say to you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that shall deny me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But to him that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they shall bring you into the synagogues, and to magistrates and powers, be not solicitous how or what you shall answer, or what you shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you must say. And one of the multitude said to him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who hath appointed me judge or divider over you? And he said to them, Take heed, and beware of all covetousness. For a man's life doth not consist in the abundance of things which he possesseth. And he spoke a similitude to them, saying, the land of a certain rich man brought forth plenty of fruits. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, and will build greater, and into them will I gather all things that are grown to me and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul! Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy rest, eat, drink, make good cheer. And God said to him, Thou fool, this night do they require thy soul of thee. And whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, Be not solicitous for your life, what you shall eat, nor for your body, what you shall put on. The life is more than the meat, and the body is more than the raiment. Consider the ravens, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither have they storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much are you more valuable than they? And which of you, by taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit. If then ye be not able to do so much as the least thing, why are you solicitous for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, they labor not, 
neither do they spin but i say to you not even solomon in all his glory was clothed like one of these now if god clothe in this manner the grass that is to-day in the field and to-morrow is cast into the oven how much more you o ye of little faith and seek not what you shall eat or what you shall drink and be not lifted up on high for all these things do the nations of the world seek but your father knoweth that you have need of these things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his justice and all these things shall be added unto you fear not little flock for it hath pleased your father to give you a kingdom sell what you possess and give alms make to yourselves bags which grow not old a treasure in heaven which faileth not where no thief approacheth nor moth corrupteth for where your treasure is there will your heart be also let your loins be girt and lamps burning in your hands and you yourselves like to men who wait for their lord when he shall return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh they may open to him immediately blessed are those servants whom the lord when he cometh shall find watching amen i say to you that he will gird himself and make them sit down to meet and passing will minister unto them and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants but this know ye that if the householder did know at what hour the thief would come he would surely watch and would not suffer his house to be broken open be you then also ready for at what hour you think not the son of man will come and peter said to him lord dost thou speak this parable to us or likewise to all and the lord said who thinkest thou is the faithful and wise steward whom his lord setteth over his family to give them their measure of wheat in due season blessed is that servant whom when his lord shall come he shall find so doing verily i say to you he will set him over all that he possesseth but if that servant shall say in his heart my lord is long in coming and shall begin to strike the men servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and to be drunk the lord of that servant will come the day that he hopeth not and that the hour that he knoweth not and shall separate him and shall appoint him his portion with unbelievers and that servant who knew the will of his lord and prepared not himself and did not according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes but he that knew not and did things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes and unto whomsoever much is given of him much shall be required and to whom they have committed much of him they will demand the more i am come to cast fire on the earth and what will i but that it be kindled and i have a baptism wherewith i am to be baptized and how am i straitened until it be accomplished think ye that i come to give peace on earth i tell you no but separation for there shall be from henceforth five in one house divided three against two and two against three the father shall be divided against the son and the son against his father the mother against the daughter and the daughter against her mother the mother-in-law against the daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and he said also to the multitudes when you see a cloud rising from the west presently you say a shower is coming and so it happeneth and when ye see the south wind blow you say there will be heat and it cometh to pass you hypocrites you know how to discern the face of the heaven and of the earth but how is it that you do not discern this time 
and why even of yourselves do you not judge that which is just and when thou goest with thy adversary to the prince whilst thou art in the way endeavour to be delivered from him lest perhaps he draw thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the exactor and the exactor cast thee into prison i say to thee thou shalt not go out thence until you pay the very last might luke chapter thirteen the necessity of penance the barren fig tree the cure of the infirm woman the journey to jerusalem and there were present at that very time some that told him of the galileans whose blood pilate had mingled with their sacrifices and he answering said to them think you that these galileans were sinners above all the men of galilee because they suffered such things no i say to you but unless you shall do penance you shall all likewise perish or those eighteen upon whom the tower fell in siloe and slew them think you that they also were debtors above all the men that dwelt in jerusalem no i say to you but except you do penance you shall all likewise perish he spoke also this parable a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and found none and he said to the dresser of the vineyard behold for these three years i come seeking fruit on this fig tree and i find none cut it down therefore why cumbereth it the ground but he answering said to him lord let it alone this year also until i dig about it and dung it and if happily it bear fruit but if not then after that thou shalt cut it down and he was teaching in their synagogue on their sabbath and behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years and she was bowed together neither could she look upwards at all whom when jesus saw he called her unto him and said to her woman thou art delivered from thy infirmity and he laid his hands upon her and immediately she was made straight and glorified god and the ruler of the synagogue being angry that jesus had healed on the sabbath answering said to the multitude six days there are wherein you ought to work in them therefore come and be healed and not on the sabbath day and the lord answering him said ye hypocrites doth not every one of you on the sabbath day loose his ox or his ass from the manger and lead them to water and ought not this daughter of abraham whom satan hath bound lo these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the sabbath day and when he said these things all his adversaries were ashamed and all the people rejoiced for all the things that were gloriously done by him and he said therefore to what is the kingdom of god like and whereunto shall i resemble it it is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and cast into his garden and it grew and became a great tree and the birds of the air lodged in the branches thereof and again he said whereunto shall i esteem the kingdom of god to be like it is like to leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened and he went through the cities and towns teaching and making his journey to jerusalem and a certain man said to him lord are they few that are saved but he said to them strive to enter by the narrow gate for many i say to you shall seek to enter and shall not be able footnote shall seek etc shall desire to be saved but for want of taking sufficient pains and being thoroughly in earnest shall not attain to it End of footnote. but when the master of the house shall be gone in and shall shut the door 
you shall begin to stand without and knock at the door saying lord open to us and he answering shall say to you i know you not whence you are then you shall begin to say we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou hast taught in our streets and he shall say to you i know you not whence you are depart from me all ye workers of iniquity there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you shall see abraham and isaac and jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of god and you yourselves thrust out and there shall come from the east and the west and the north and the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of god and behold they are last that shall be first and they are first that shall be last the same day there came some of the pharisees saying to him depart and get thee hence for herod hath a mind to kill thee and he said to them go and tell that fox behold i cast out devils and do cures to-day and to-morrow and the third day i am consummated nevertheless i must walk to-day and to-morrow and the day following because it cannot be that a prophet perish out of jerusalem 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 that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent to thee how often would i have gathered thy children as the bird doth her brood under her wings and thou wouldst not behold your house shall be left to you desolate and i say to you that you shall not see me till the time come when you shall say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the lord luke chapter fourteen christ heals the dropsical man the parable of the supper the necessity of renouncing all to follow christ and it came to pass when jesus went into the house of one of the pharisees on the sabbath day that they watched him and behold there was a certain man before him that had the dropsy and jesus answering spoke to the lawyers and pharisees saying is it lawful to heal on the sabbath day but they held their peace but he taking him healed him and sent him away and answering them he said which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit and will not immediately draw him out on the sabbath day and they could not answer him to these things and he spoke a parable also to them that were invited marking how they chose the first seats at the table saying to them when thou art invited to a wedding sit not down in the first place lest perhaps one more honourable than thou be invited by him and he that invited thee and him come and say to thee give this man place and then thou begin with shame to take the lowest place but when thou art invited go sit down in the lowest place that when he who invited thee cometh he may say to thee friend go up higher then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at table with thee because every one that exalteth himself shall be humbled and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted and he said to him also that had invited him when thou makest a dinner or a supper call not thy friends nor thy brethren nor thy kinsmen nor thy neighbours who are rich lest perhaps they also invite thee again and a recompense be made to thee but when thou makest a feast call the poor the maimed the lame and the blind and thou shalt be blessed because they have not wherewith to make thee recompense for recompense shall be made thee at the resurrection of the just when one of them that sat at table with him had heard these things he said to him blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of god but he said to him a certain man made a great supper and invited many and he sent his servant at the hour of supper 
to say to them that were invited that they should come, for now all things are ready. And they began all at once to make excuse. The first said to him, I have bought a farm, and I must needs go out and see it. I pray thee, hold me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to try them. I pray thee, hold me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And the servant returning told these things to his lord. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the feeble and the blind and the lame. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said to the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. But I say unto you that none of those men that were invited shall taste of my supper. And there went great multitudes with him, and turning he said to them, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Footnote. Hate not, etc. The law of Christ does not allow us to hate even our enemies, much less our parents, but the meaning of the text is that we must be in that disposition of soul as to be willing to renounce and part with everything how near or dear soever it may be to us that would keep us from following Christ. End of footnote. And whosoever doth not carry his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you having a mind to build a tower doth not first sit down and reckon the charges that are necessary whether he have wherewithal to finish it? lest after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Or what king about to make war against another king doth not first sit down, and think whether he be able, with ten thousand, to meet him that with twenty thousand cometh against him? Or else, while the other is yet afar off, sending an embassy, he desireth conditions of peace. So likewise every one of you that doth not renounce all that he possesseth cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt shall lose its savour, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither profitable for the land nor for the dunghill but shall be cast out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Luke chapter 15 The Parables of the Lost Sheep and of the Prodigal Son Now the publicans and sinners drew near unto him to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spoke to them this parable, saying, What man of you that hath an hundred sheep, and if he shall lose one of them, doth he not leave the ninety-nine in the desert, and go after that which was lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, lay it upon his shoulders, rejoicing. And coming home, calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my sheep that was lost. I say to you that even so there shall be joy in heaven upon one sinner that doth penance, more than upon ninety-nine just who need not penance. Or what woman having ten groats, if she lose one groat, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it? And when she hath found it, call together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found the groat that I had lost. So I say to you, there shall be joy before the angels of God upon one sinner 
doing penance. Footnote. Before the angels. By this it is plain that the spirits in heaven have a concern for us below, and a joy at our repentance, and consequently a knowledge of it. End of footnote. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of substance that falleth to me, and he divided unto them his substance. And not many days after, the younger son, gathering all together, went abroad into a far country, and there wasted his substance, living riotously. And after he had spent all, there came a mighty famine in that country, and he began to be in want. And he went and cleaved to one of the citizens of that country, and he sent him into his farm to feed swine and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And returning to himself, he said, How many hired servants in my father's house abound with bread, and I here perish with hunger? I will arise, and will go to my father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am not worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And rising up, he came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and was moved with compassion, and running to him, fell upon his neck, and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am not now worthy to be called thy son. And the father said to his servants, Bring forth quickly the first robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and make merry, because this my son was dead, and is come to life again, was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe. And he was angry and would not go in. His father therefore coming out began to entreat him. And he answering said to his father, Behold, for so many years do I serve thee, and I have never transgressed thy commandment, and yet thou hast never give me a kid to make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son is come, who hath devoured his substance with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. But he said to him, Son, thou art always with me, and all I have is thine. But it was fit that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and is come to life again. He was lost, and is found. Luke chapter 16 The parable of the unjust steward, and of the rich man, and Lazarus. And he said also to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him, and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do, because my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship? To dig I am not able, to beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do that when I shall be removed from the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Therefore, calling together every one of his lord's debtors, he said to the first, How much dost thou owe my lord? But he said, An hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much dost thou owe? Who said, an hundred quarters of wheat, and he said to him, Take thy bill, and write eighty. 
and the Lord commended the unjust steward, for as much as he had done wisely, for the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And I say to you, make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Footnote. Mammon of iniquity. Mammon signifies riches. They are here called the mammon of iniquity, because oftentimes ill-gotten, ill-bestowed, or an occasion of evil, and at the best are but worldly and false, and not the true riches of a Christian. They may receive, by this we see that the poor servants of God, whom we have relieved by our alms, may hereafter by their intercession bring our souls to heaven. End of footnote. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in that which is greater, and he that is unjust in that which is little is unjust also in that which is greater. If then you have not been faithful in the unjust mammon, who will trust you with that which is the true? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, you are they who justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is high to men is an abomination before God. The law and the prophets were until John. From that time the kingdom of God is preached, and every one useth violence towards it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than, than one tittle of the law to fall. Every one that putteth away his wife, and marrieth another, committeth adultery. And he that marrieth her that is put away from her husband, committeth adultery. There was a certain rich man, who was clothed in purple and fine linen, and feasted sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, who lay at his gate full of sores desiring to be filled with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table, and no one did give him. Moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died, and he was buried in hell. Footnote, Abraham's bosom the place of rest where the souls of the saints resided till Christ had opened heaven by his death. End of footnote. And lifting up his eyes, when he was in torments, he saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, to cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said to him, Son, remember that thou didst receive good things in thy lifetime, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there is fixed a great chaos, so that they who would pass from hence to you cannot nor from thence come hither. And he said, Then, Father, I beseech thee that thou wouldst send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torments. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. But he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will do penance. And he said to them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, 
neither will they believe if one rise again from the dead. Luke chapter 17 Lessons of avoiding scandal and of the efficacy of faith. The ten lepers. The manner of the coming of Christ. And he said to his disciples, It is impossible that scandals should not come, but woe to him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he cast into the sea, than that he should scandalize one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. If thy brother sin against thee, reprove him, and if he do penance, forgive him. And if he sin against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, be converted unto thee, saying, I repent, forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith like to a grain of mustard seed, you might say to this mulberry tree, Be thou rooted up, and be thou transplanted into the sea, and it would obey you. But which of you, having a servant ploughing or feeding cattle, will say to him, when he is come from the field, immediately go, sit down to meet, and will not rather say to him, Make ready my supper, and gird thyself, and serve me, whilst I eat and drink, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink. Doth he thank that servant for doing the things which he commanded him? I think not. So you also, when you shall have done all these things that are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants, we have done that which we ought to do. Footnote unprofitable servants because our service is of no profit to our master and he justly claims it as our bounden duty but though we are unprofitable to him our serving him is not unprofitable to us for he is pleased to give by his grace a value to our good works which in consequence of his promise entitles them to an, an eternal reward and a footnote and it came to pass as he was going to jerusalem he passed through the midst of samaria and galilee and as he entered into a certain town there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off and lifted up their voice saying jesus master have mercy on us whom when he saw he said go show yourselves to the priests and it came to pass, as they went, they were made clean. And one of them, when he saw that he was made clean, went back with a loud voice glorifying God. And he fell on his face before his feet, giving thanks. And this was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were not ten made clean? And where are the nine? There is no one found to return and give glory to God but this stranger. And he said to him, Arise, go thy way, for thy faith hath made thee whole. And being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answering them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Behold here, or Behold there, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. And he said to his disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one day of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they will say to you, See here and see there, go ye not after, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth from under heaven shineth, unto the parts that are under heaven, so shall the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things, and be rejected by this generation. And as it came to pass in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat and drink, they married wives, and were given in marriage until one day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all likewise as it came to pass in the days of lot 
they did eat and drink and they bought and sold they planted and built and in the day that lot went out of sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man shall be revealed in that hour he that shall be on the housetop and his goods in the house let him not go down to take them away and he that shall be in the field in like manner let him not return back remember lot's wife whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose it shall preserve it i say to you in that night there shall be two men in one bed the one shall be taken and the other shall be left two women shall be grinding together the one shall be taken and the other shall be left two men shall be in the field the one shall be taken and the other shall be left they answering say to him where lord who said to them wheresoever the body shall be thither will the eagles also be gathered together luke chapter eighteen we must pray always the pharisee and the publican the danger of riches the blind man is restored to sight and he spoke also a parable to them that we ought always to pray and not to faint saying there was a judge in a certain city who feared not god nor regarded man and there was a certain widow in that city and she came to him saying avenge me of my adversary footnote avenge that is do me justice it is a hebraism and footnote and he would not for a long time but afterward he said within himself although i fear not god nor regard man yet because this widow is troublesome to me i will avenge her lest continually coming she weary me and the lord said hear what the unjust judge saith and will not god revenge his elect who cry to him day and night and will he have patience in their regard i say to you that he will quickly revenge them but yet the son of man when he cometh shall he find think you faith on earth and to some who trusted in themselves as just and despised others he spoke also this parable two men went up into the temple to pray the one a pharisee and the other a publican and the pharisee standing prayed thus with himself o god i give thee thanks that i am not as the rest of men extortioners unjust adulterers as also is this publican i fast twice in a week i give tithes of all that i possess and the publican standing afar off would not so much as lift up his eyes towards heaven but struck his breast saying o god be merciful to me a sinner i say to you this man went down into his house justified rather than the other because every one that exalteth himself shall be humbled and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted and they brought unto him also infants that he might touch them which when the disciples saw they rebuked them but jesus calling them together said suffer children to come to me and forbid them not for of such is the kingdom of god amen i say to you whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of god as a child shall not enter into it and a certain ruler asked him saying good master what shall i do to possess everlasting life and jesus said to him why dost thou call me good none is good but god alone thou knowest the commandments thou shalt not kill thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not steal thou shalt not bear false witness honor thy father and mother who said all these things have i kept from my youth which when jesus had heard he said to him yet one thing is wanting to thee sell all whatever thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me 
he having heard these things became sorrowful for he was very rich and jesus seeing him become sorrowful said how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of god for it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of god and they that heard it said who then can be saved he said to them the things that are impossible with men are possible with god then peter said behold we have left all things and have followed thee who said to them amen i say to you there is no man that hath left home or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of god's sake who shall not receive much more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting then jesus took unto him the twelve and said to them behold we go up to jerusalem and all things shall be accomplished which were written by the prophets concerning the son of man for he shall be delivered to the gentiles and shall be mocked and scourged and spit upon and after they have scourged him they will put him to death and the third day he shall rise again and they understood none of these things and this word was hid from them and they understood not the things that were said now it came to pass when he drew nigh to jericho that a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging and when he heard the multitude passing by he asked what this meant and they told him that jesus of nazareth was passing by and he cried out saying jesus son of david have mercy on me and they that went before him rebuked him that he should hold his peace but he cried out much more son of david have mercy on me and jesus standing commanded him to be brought unto him and when he was come near he asked him saying what wilt thou that i do to thee but he said lord that i may see and jesus said to him receive thy sight thy faith hath made thee whole and immediately he saw and followed him glorifying god and all the people when they saw it gave praise to god end of section seven Section 8 of the Douay Reims New Testament. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Section 8. Luke chapter 19. Zacchaeus entertains Christ. The parable of the pounds. Christ rides upon an ass and weeps over Jerusalem. And entering, he walked through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was the chief of the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and he could not for the crowd, because he was low of stature. And running before, he climbed up into a sycamore tree, that he might see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus was come to the place, looking up, he saw him, and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for this day i must abide in thy house and he made haste and came down and received him with joy and when all saw it they murmured saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that was a sinner but zacchaeus standing said to the lord behold lord the half of my goods i give to the poor and if i have wronged any man of anything i restore him fourfold jesus said to him this day is salvation come to this house because he also is a son of abraham for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost as they were hearing these things he added and spoke a parable because he was nigh to jerusalem and because they thought that the kingdom of god should immediately be manifested he said therefore a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return 
and calling his ten servants, he gave them ten pounds, and said to them, Trade till I come. Footnote. He gave them ten pounds. In the original, what is here translated a pound is in Latin mina, in value of our coins, three pounds, two shillings, and sixpence. But his citizens hated him, and they sent an embassage after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that he returned, having received the kingdom, and he commanded his servants to be called, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. And the first came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said to him, Well done, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a little, thou shalt have power over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said to him, Be thou also over five cities. And another came, saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up what thou didst not lay down, and thou reapest that which thou didst not sow. He said to him, Out of thy own mouth I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up what I laid not down, and reaping that which I did not sow. And why then didst thou not give my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have exacted it with usury? And he said to them that stood by, Take the pound away from him, and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. But I say to you, that to every one that hath shall be given, and he shall abound. And from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken from him. But as for those my enemies, who would not have me reign over them, bring them hither, and kill them before me. And having said these things, he went before, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethania, unto the mount called Olivet, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the town which is over against you, at your entering into which you shall find the colt of an ass tied, on which no man ever hath sitten. Loose him, and bring him hither. And if any man shall ask you, Why do you loose him? You shall say thus unto him, Because the Lord hath need of his service. And they that were sent went their way, and found the colt standing, as he said unto them. And as they were loosing the colt, the owners thereof said to them, Why loose you the colt? But they said, Because the Lord hath need of him. And they brought him to Jesus, and casting their garments on the colt, they set Jesus thereon, and as he went, they spread their clothes underneath in the way. And when he was now coming near the descent of Mount Olivet, the whole multitude of his disciples began with joy to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen saying blessed be the king who cometh in the name of the lord peace in heaven and glory on high and some of the pharisees from amongst the multitude said to him master rebuke thy disciples to whom he said i say to you that if these shall hold their peace the stones will cry out and when he drew near seeing the city he wept over it saying if thou also hadst known and that in this thy day the things that are to thy peace, but now they are hidden from thy eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, and thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and straighten thee on every side, and beat thee flat to the ground, and thy children who are in thee. And they shall not leave in thee a stone upon a stone, because thou hast not known the time of thy visitation. 
and entering into the temple he began to cast out them that sold therein and them that bought saying to them it is written my house is the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and he was teaching daily in the temple and the chief priests and the scribes and the rulers of the people sought to destroy him and they found not what to do to him for all the people were very attentive to hear him luke chapter twenty the parable of the husbandmen of paying tribute to caesar and of the resurrection of the dead and it came to pass that on one of the days as he was teaching the people in the temple and preaching the gospel the chief priests and the scribes and the ancients met together and spoke to him saying tell us by what authority dost thou these things or who is he that hath given thee this authority and jesus answering said to them i will also ask you one thing answer me the baptism of john was it from heaven or of men but they thought within themselves saying if we shall say from heaven he will say why then did you not believe in him and if we say of men the whole people will stone us for they are persuaded that john was a prophet and jesus said to them neither do i tell you by what authority i do these things and he began to speak to the people this parable a certain man planted a vineyard and let it out to husbandmen and he was abroad for a long time and at the season he sent a servant to the husbandmen that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard who beating him sent him away empty and again he sent another servant but they beat him also and treating him reproachfully sent him away empty and again he sent the third and they wounded him also and cast him out then the lord of the vineyard said what shall i do i will send my beloved son it may be when they see him they will reverence him whom when the husbandmen saw they thought within themselves saying this is the heir let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours so casting him out of the vineyard they killed him what therefore will the lord of the vineyard do to them he will come and will destroy these husbandmen and will give the vineyard to others which they hearing said to him god forbid but he looking on them said what is this then that is written the stone which the builders rejected the same is become the head of the corner whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be bruised and upon whomsoever it shall fall it will grind him to powder and the chief priests and scribes sought to lay hands on him the same hour but they feared the people for they knew that he spoke this parable to them and being upon the watch they sent spies who should feign themselves just that they might take hold of him in his words that they might deliver him up to the authority and power of the governor they asked him saying master we know that thou speakest and teachest rightly and thou dost not respect any person but teacheth the way of god in truth is it lawful for us to give tribute to caesar or no but he considering their guile said to them why tempt you me show me a penny whose image and inscription hath it they answering said to him caesar's and he said to them render therefore to caesar the things that are caesar's and to god the things that are god's and they could not reprehend his word before the people and wondering at his answer they held their peace and there came to him some of the sadducees who deny that there is any resurrection and they asked him saying master moses wrote unto us if any man's brother die having a wife and he leave no children that his brother should take her to wife and raise up seed unto his brother there were therefore seven brethren and the first took a wife and died without children and the next took her to wife 
and he also died childless and the third took her and in like manner all the seven and they left no children and died last of all the woman died also in the resurrection therefore whose wife of them shall she be for all the seven had her to wife and jesus said to them the children of this world marry and are given in marriage but they that shall be accounted worthy of that world and of the resurrection from the dead shall neither be married nor take wives neither can they die any more for they are equal to the angels and are the children of god being the children of the resurrection now that the dead rise again moses also showed at the bush when he called the lord the god of abraham and the god of isaac and the god of jacob for he is not the god of the dead but of the living for all live to him and some of the scribes answering said to him master thou hast said well and after that they durst not ask him any more questions but he said to them how say they that christ is the son of david and david himself saith in the book of psalms the lord said to my lord sit thou on my right hand till i make thy enemies thy footstool david then calleth him lord and how is he his son and in the hearing of all the people he said to his disciples beware of the scribes who desire to walk in long robes and love salutations in the marketplace and the first chairs in the synagogues and the chief rooms at feasts who devour the houses of widows feigning long prayer these shall receive greater damnation luke chapter twenty one the widow's mites the signs that should forerun the destruction of jerusalem and the end of the world and looking on he saw the rich men cast their gifts into the treasury and he saw also a certain poor widow casting in two brass mites and he said verily i say to you that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all for all these have of their abundance cast into the offerings of god but she of her want hath cast in all the living that she had and some saying of the temple that it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts he said these things which you see the days will come in which there shall not be left a stone upon a stone that shall not be thrown down and they asked him saying master when shall these things be and what shall be the sign when they shall begin to come to pass who said take heed you be not seduced for many will come in my name saying i am he and the time is at hand go ye not therefore after them and when you shall hear of wars and seditions be not terrified these things must first come to pass but the end is not yet presently then he said to them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be great earthquakes in diverse places and pestilences and famines and terrors from heaven and there shall be great signs but before all these things they will lay their hands on you and persecute you delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons dragging you before kings and governors for my name's sake and it shall happen unto you for a testimony lay it up therefore in your hearts not to meditate before how you shall answer for i will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to resist and gainsay and you shall be betrayed by your parents and brethren and kinsmen and friends and some of you will be put to death and you shall be hated by all men for my name's sake but a hair of your head shall not perish in your patience you shall possess your souls and when you shall see jerusalem compassed about with an army then know that the desolation thereof is at hand then let those who are in judea flee to the mountains 
and those who are in the midst thereof depart out and those who are in the countries not enter into it for these are the days of vengeance that all things may be fulfilled that are written but woe to them that are with child and give suck in those days for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captives into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down by the gentiles till the times of the nations be fulfilled and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations by reason of the confusion of the roaring of the sea and of the waves men withering away for fear and expectation of what shall come upon the whole world for the powers of heaven shall be moved and then they shall see the son of man coming in a cloud with great power and majesty but when these things begin to come to pass look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is at hand and he spoke to them a similitude see the fig tree and all the trees when they now shoot forth their fruit you know that summer is nigh so you also when you shall see these things come to pass know that the kingdom of god is at hand amen i say to you this generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away and take heed to yourselves lest perhaps your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life and that day come upon you suddenly for as a snare shall it come upon all that sit upon the face of the whole earth watch ye therefore praying at all times that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are to come and to stand before the son of man and in the daytime he was teaching in the temple but at night going out he abode in the mount that is called olivet and all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple to hear him luke chapter twenty two the treason of judas the last supper the first part of the history of the passion now the feast of unleavened bread which is called the pasch was at hand and the chief priests and scribes sought how they might put jesus to death but they feared the people and satan entered into judas who was surnamed iscariot one of the twelve and he went and discoursed with the chief priests and the magistrates how he might betray him to them and they were glad and covenanted to give him money and he promised and he sought opportunity to betray him in the absence of the multitude and the day of the unleavened bread came on which it was necessary that the pasch should be killed and he sent peter and john saying go and prepare for us the pasch that we may eat but they said where wilt thou that we prepare and he said to them behold as you go into the city there shall meet you a man carrying a pitcher of water follow him into the house where he entereth in and you shall say to the good man of the house the master saith to thee where is the guest chamber where i may eat the pasch with my disciples and he will show you a large dining-room furnished and there prepare and they going found as he had said to them and made ready the pasch and when the hour was come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him and he said to them with desire i have desired to eat this pasch with you before i suffer for i say to you that from this time i will not eat it till it be fulfilled in the kingdom of god and having taken the chalice he gave thanks and said take and divide it among you for i say to you that i will not drink of the fruit of the vine till the kingdom of god come and taking bread he gave thanks and break and gave to them saying this is my body which is given for you 
do this for a commemoration of me footnote do this for a commemoration of me this sacrifice and sacrament is to be continued in the church to the end of the world to show forth the death of christ until he cometh but this commemoration or remembrance is by no means inconsistent with the real presence of the body and blood under these sacramental veils which represent his death on the contrary it is the manner that he himself hath commanded of commemorating and celebrating his death by offering in sacrifice and receiving in the sacrament that body and blood by which we were redeemed and a footnote in like manner the chalice also after he had supped saying this is the chalice the new testament in my blood which shall be shed for you but yet behold the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the table and the son of man indeed goeth according to that which is determined and yet woe to that man by whom he shall be betrayed and they began to inquire among themselves which of them it was that should do this thing and there was also a strife amongst them which of them should seem to be the greater and he said to them the kings of the gentiles lord it over them and they that have power over them are called beneficent but you not so but he that is the greater among you let him become as the younger and he that is the leader as he that serveth for which is greater he that sitteth at table or he that serveth is not he that sitteth at table but i am in the midst of you as he that serveth and you are they who have continued with me in my temptations and i dispose to you as my father hath disposed to me a kingdom that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and may sit upon thrones judging the twelve tribes of israel and the lord said simon simon behold satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat but i have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not and thou being once converted confirm thy brethren who said to him lord i am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death and he said i say to thee peter the cock shall not crow this day till thou thrice deniest that thou knowest me and he said to them when i sent you without purse and scrip and shoes did you want anything but they said nothing then said he unto them but now he that hath a purse let him take it and likewise a scrip and he that hath not let him sell his coat and buy a sword for i say to you that this that is written must yet be fulfilled in me and with the wicked was he reckoned for the things concerning me have an end but they said lord here are two swords and he said to them it is enough and going out he went according to his custom to the mount of olives and his disciples also followed him and when he was come to the place he said to them pray lest ye enter into temptation and he was withdrawn away from them a stone's cast and kneeling down he prayed saying father if thou wilt remove this chalice from me but yet not my will but thine be done and there appeared to him an angel from heaven strengthening him and being in an agony he prayed the longer and his sweat became as drops of blood trickling down upon the ground and when he rose up from prayer and was come to the disciples he found them sleeping for sorrow and he said to them why sleep you arise pray lest you enter into temptation and as he was yet speaking behold a multitude and he that was called judas one of the twelve went before them and drew near to jesus for to kiss him and jesus said to him judas dost thou betray the son of man with a kiss and they that were about him seeing what would follow said to him lord shall we strike with the sword 
and one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear but jesus answering said suffer ye thus far and when he had touched his ear he healed him and jesus said to the chief priests and magistrates of the temple and the ancients that were come unto him are ye come out as it were against a thief with swords and clubs when i was daily with you in the temple you did not stretch forth your hands against me but this is your honour and the power of darkness and apprehending him they led him to the high priest's house but peter followed afar off and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were sitting about peter was in the midst of them whom when a certain servant maid had seen sitting at the light and had earnestly beheld him she said this man was also with him but he denied him saying woman i know him not and after a little while another seeing him said thou also art one of them but peter said o man i am not footnote another etc observe here in order to reconcile the four evangelists that diverse persons occurred in charging peter with being christ's disciple till at length they brought him to deny him thrice one the porteress that let him in and afterwards seeing him at the fire first put the question to him and then positively affirmed that he was with christ two another maid accused him to the standers by and gave occasion to the man here mentioned to renew the charge against him which caused the second denial three others of the company took notice of his being a galilean and were seconded by the kinsman of malchus who affirmed he had seen him in the garden and this drew on the third denial and a footnote and after the space as it were of one hour another certain man affirmed saying of a truth this man was also with him for he is also a galilean and peter said man i know not what thou sayest and immediately as he was yet speaking the cock crew and the lord turning looked on peter and peter remembered the word of the lord as he had said before the cock crow thou shalt deny thrice and peter going out wept bitterly and the men that held him mocked him and struck him and they blindfolded him and smote his face and they asked him saying prophesy who is it that struck thee and blaspheming many other things they said against him and as soon as it was day the ancients of the people and the chief priests and scribes came together and they brought him into their council saying if thou be the christ tell us and he saith to them if i shall tell you you will not believe me and if i shall also ask you you will not answer me nor let me go but hereafter the son of man shall be sitting on the right hand of the power of god then said they all art thou then the son of god who said you say that i am and they said what need we any further testimony for we ourselves have heard it from his own mouth luke chapter twenty three the continuation of the history of the passion and the whole multitude of them rising up led him to pilate and they began to accuse him saying we have found this man perverting our nation and forbidding to give tribute to caesar and saying that he is christ the king and pilate asked him saying art thou the king of the jews but he answering said thou sayest it and pilate said to the chief priests and to the multitudes i find no cause in this man but they were more earnest saying he stirreth up the people teaching throughout all judea beginning from galilee to this place but pilate hearing galilee asked if the man were of galilee and when he understood that he was of herod's jurisdiction he sent him away to herod who was also himself at jerusalem in those days 
and herod seeing jesus was very glad for he was desirous of a long time to see him because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to see some sign wrought by him and he questioned him in many words but he answered him nothing and the chief priests and scribes stood by earnestly accusing him and herod with his army set him at naught and mocked him putting on him a white garment and sent him back to pilate and herod and pilate were made friends that same day for before they were enemies one to another and pilate calling together the chief priests and the magistrates and the people said to them you have presented unto me this man as one that perverteth the people and behold i having examined him before you find no cause in this man in those things wherein you accuse him no nor herod neither for i sent you to him and behold nothing worthy of death is done to him i will chastise him therefore and release him now of necessity he was to release unto them one upon the feast day but the whole multitude together cried out saying away with this man and release unto us barabbas who for a certain sedition made in the city and for a murder was cast into prison and pilate again spoke to them desiring to release jesus and they cried again saying crucify him crucify him and he said to them the third time why what evil hath this man done i find no cause of death in him i will chastise him therefore and let him go but they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified and their voices prevailed and pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required and he released unto them him who for murder and sedition had been cast into prison whom they had desired but jesus he delivered up to their will and as they led him away they laid hold of one simon of cyrene coming from the country and they laid the cross on him to carry after jesus and there followed him a great multitude of people and of women who bewailed and lamented him but jesus turning to them said daughters of jerusalem weep not over me but weep for yourselves and for your children for behold the days shall come wherein they will say blessed are the barren and the wombs that have not borne and the paps that have not given suck then shall they begin to say to the mountains fall upon us and to the hills cover us for if in the green wood they do these things what shall be done in the dry and there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death and when they were come to the place which is called calvary they crucified him there and the robbers one on the right hand and the other on the left and jesus said father forgive them for they know not what they do but they dividing his garments cast lots and the people stood beholding and the rulers with them derided him saying he saved others let him save himself if he be christ the elect of god and the soldiers also mocked him coming to him and offering him vinegar and saying if thou be the king of the jews save thyself and there was also a superscription written over him in the letters of greek and latin and hebrew this is the king of the jews and one of those robbers who were hanged blasphemed him saying if thou be christ save thyself and us but the other answering rebuked him saying neither dost thou fear god seeing thou art under the same condemnation and we indeed justly for we receive the due rewards of our deeds but this man hath done no evil and he said to jesus lord remember me when thou shalt come into thy kingdom and jesus said to him amen i say to thee this day thou shalt be with me in paradise footnote in paradise that is in the happy state of rest joy and peace everlasting christ was pleased 
by a special privilege to reward the faith and confession of the penitent thief with a full discharge of all his sins both as to the guilt and punishment and to introduce him immediately after death into the happy society of the saints whose limbo that is the place of their confinement was now made a paradise by our lord's going thither and a footnote and it was almost the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour and the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst and jesus crying with a loud voice said father into thy hands i commend my spirit and saying this he gave up the ghost now the centurion seeing what was done glorified god saying indeed this was a just man and all the multitude of them that were come together to that sight and saw the things that were done returned striking their breasts and all his acquaintance and the women that had followed him from galilee stood afar off beholding these things and behold there was a man named joseph who was a counsellor a good and a just man the same had not consented to their counsel and doings of arimathea a city of judea who also himself looked for the kingdom of god this man went to pilate and begged the body of jesus and taking him down he wrapped him in fine linen and laid him in a sepulchre that was hewed in stone wherein never yet any man had been laid and it was the day of the paras eve and the sabbath drew on footnote paras eve that is the eve or day of preparation for the sabbath and a footnote and the women that were come with him from galilee following after saw the sepulchre and how his body was laid and returning they prepared spices and ointments and on the sabbath day they rested according to the commandment luke chapter twenty four christ's resurrection and manifestation of himself to his disciples and on the first day of the week very early in the morning they came to the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and they found the stone rolled back from the sepulchre and going in they found not the body of the lord jesus and it came to pass as they were astonished in their mind at this behold two men stood by them in shining apparel and as they were afraid and bowed down their countenance towards the ground they said unto them why seek you the living with the dead he is not here but is risen remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again and they remembered his words and going back from the sepulchre they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest and it was mary magdalene and joanna and mary of james and the other women that were with them who told these things to the apostles and these words seemed to them as idle tales and they did not believe them but peter rising up ran to the sepulchre and stooping down he saw the linen cloths laid by themselves and went away wondering in himself at that which was come to pass and behold two of them went the same day to a town which was sixty furlongs from jerusalem named emmaus and they talked together of all these things which had happened and it came to pass that while they talked and, and reasoned with themselves jesus himself also drawing near went with them but their eyes were held that they should not know him and he said to them what are these discourses that you hold one with another as you walk and are sad and one of them whose name was cleophas answering said to him art thou only a stranger in jerusalem and hast not known the things that have been done there in these days to whom he said what things and they said concerning jesus of nazareth who was a prophet 
mighty in work and word before god and all the people and how our chief priests and princes delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him but we hoped that it was he that should have redeemed israel and now besides all this to-day is the third day since these things were done yea and certain women also of our company affrighted us who before it was light were at the sepulchre and not finding his body came saying that they had all seen a vision of angels who say that he is alive and some of our people went to the sepulchre and found it so as the women had said but him they found not then he said to them o foolish and slow of heart to believe in all things which the prophets have spoken ought not christ to have suffered these things and so to enter into his glory and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things that were concerning him and they drew nigh to the town whither they were going and he made as though he would go farther but they constrained him saying stay with us because it is towards evening and the day is now far spent and he went in with them and it came to pass whilst he was at table with them he took bread and blessed and break and give to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said one to the other was not our heart burning within us whilst he spoke in the way and opened to us the scriptures and rising up the same hour they went back to jerusalem and they found the eleven gathered together and those that were with them saying the lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to simon and they told what things were done in the way and how they knew him in the breaking of bread now whilst they were speaking these things jesus stood in the midst of them and saith to them peace be to you it is i fear not but they being troubled and frightened supposed that they saw a spirit and he said to them why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts see my hands and feet that it is i myself handle and see for the spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me to have and when he had said this he showed them his hands and feet but while they yet believed not and wondered for joy he said have you here anything to eat and they offered him a piece of a broiled fish and a honeycomb and when he had eaten before them taking the remains he gave to them and he said to them these are the words which i spoke to you while i was yet with you that all things must needs be fulfilled which are written in the law of moses and in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and he said to them thus it is written and thus it behooved christ to suffer and to rise again from the dead the third day and that penance and remission of sins should be preached in his name unto all nations beginning at jerusalem and you are witnesses of these things and i send the promise of my father upon you but stay you in the city till you be endued with power from on high footnote the promise of my father that is the holy ghost whom christ had promised that his father and he would send john chapter fourteen verse twenty six and chapter seventeen verse seven and a footnote and he led them out as far as bethania and lifting up his hands he blessed them and it came to pass whilst he blessed them he departed from them and was carried up to heaven and they adoring went back into jerusalem with great joy and they were always in the temple praising and blessing god amen